Mike Picelli here. Thanks for hanging out with me. And for this lesson, I'll talk about All My Loving, as recorded by the Beatles on July 30th, 1963. Before I get started, I'd like to tell you that this little Band-Aid on my face is because I had a mole removed. Nothing to worry about. Just didn't want on my face, but uh, it's kind of gross looking right now, so I didn't want to scare y'all. <laughs> Anyways, um, Paul wrote a poem for Jane Asher when he was on a bus uh, as the Beatles were touring with uh, Roy Orbison. And it was the first time he ever wrote a poem first and then put music to it later. Uh, Paul met um, Jane Asher in April of 63. Jane Asher was like a, a British it girl. She had been in TV and film. And she was sent by a magazine to interview the Beatles at the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, all the Beatles hit on her, but Paul ended up with her. And actually McCartney ended up uh, you know, living at the Asher house and since Jane's mother was a professor of oboe, there was a music room in the basement, and that's where John and Paul wrote a lot of songs. But uh, Paul finished the music uh, backstage at another theater. In those days in the, in, in the theaters in, in England, there'd be big backstages, and there was always a piano. And Paul uh, put his poem to music uh, backstage at one of those theaters. Um, Paul was with Jane Asher until uh, summer of 68. Uh, when McCartney was caught in bed with Francie Schwartz. So much for, remember, I'll always be true. <laughs> Any road. So when they were doing the Meet the Beatles uh, record, that marathon uh, recording session, um, the last song they did was All My Loving. Uh, it was a one and a half hour session to do that, that particular song, where the Beatles were playing live, singing live, you know, doing all those great parts, the great uh, John Triplett part that I'll talk about in a minute. George is cool, Carl Perkins type solo and the, the nice moving bass line uh, of McCartney. Um, they did 11 takes of it. Take 11 was the one. Then they did a few more uh, overdub uh, takes where Paul double tracked his vocal and George played that, uh, that fabulous Carl Perkins type solo. Um, for some reason though, the, George Harrison's rhythm guitar part is like buried. And even in the mix, I mean, they, I guess they couldn't bring it up. They mixed it on the 21st of August and uh, George Martin, Norman Smith and Jeff Emmerich. Uh, I guess there was no way to salvage the rhythm part. So it's near impossible to hear exactly what George played on All My Loving. Uh, so I went to, uh, I have every live uh, ver video of them playing live. And I, I, especially the Sullivan shows, you can see what George did. So that's how I deciphered George's part for this. Um, and it was the first song they played on that Ed Sullivan show, February 9th, 1964. It was a wise choice because think about it. If they would have, you know, played a real hard rocker, it would have probably turned off middle America, especially the parents would have wanted to change the station. But All My Lovin' was a smart choice, you know, middle of the road enough uh, that it kept the 73 million viewers. Um, so it was an excellent choice. And uh, Meet the Beatles had been released... Um, I think January 20th, 64, so just a little bit before that Sullivan show. So, uh, you know, very wise song, All My Lovin' was to, uh, to, like I said, keep an audience. Well, I think that's enough of the backstory, so let's get started. John Lennon is playing his trusty Rickenbacker 325 on All My Loving which, uh, as I've said probably too many times, is a very small guitar with a tiny neck, and if you have gigantic hands, some chords are extremely difficult to play. Uh, but nevertheless, to play a verse of All My Loving, you'll need these chords. Uh, mostly four-note uh, chords, too, by the way. Uh, an F-sharp minor voice like this. A B chord. That's a tough one for me with my long fingers. E chord like this. C sharp minor. An A chord like this. Back down to the F sharp minor. A D chord like this. And a B7 here. Back to the F-sharp minor. That dang little B chord. E again. C-sharp minor again. That A again. 
new chord, a B, like this, and then that E again. So those are the chords of the verse. Now, um, John is using a triplet pattern entirely through the, uh, the verses, so he's doing his best attempt at it. In case you don't know, triplets are counted like, uh, well, John is using eighth note triplets, and an eighth note triplet is three notes dividing a quarter note. And when I count them, I count them one ta-ta, two ta-ta, three ta-ta, four ta-ta. So that's the intended rhythm he's trying to get for the, for, for the verses. Um, he cheats a little bit, which I'll talk about in a minute, but when you first learn triplets, you probably play them down, up, down, down, up, down. So it'd be... With me? One ta-ta, two ta-ta, three ta-ta, four ta-ta. But again, John's doing it up and down, so he's going one ta-ta, two ta-ta, down, up. All right, so... And then changing chords. But sometimes when he plays it, he actually just goes to four, like... And then changes chords. But his hand is continually moving. But if you were to write it out, those last two triplets are sometimes ghosted. Um, my advice when you play this is to play it very slow first. And then when you can work it up to speed, get yourself a trusty metronome, like my old buddy. And uh, it's probably the tempo about here. Play it with, because you could get confused on these triplets and, and start playing 16th notes if you, if, you, if you lose your triplet feel. So if you have the metronome going, then it's easier to you know, follow. Pretend it's Ringo. You know. Like that. Um, it's also probably a good idea when you first uh, learn these triplets is to play it with a light pick because it'll be easier to strum. If you use a medium or heavy pick, it's a little more difficult. John used kind of a medium pick, but um, try it with a lighter pick. This is, a, this is, I think, a little more than a thin, fenderish kind of pick. Okay, then on the refrain, um, he's just stabbing chords, and you'll need these chords. It's a C-sharp minor, again, to a C augmented. To the E, and that repeats. And all John does is stab on the refrain. He plays on the second beat and the end of uh, three. So it's uh, all my. Gets that last one before the solo. Okay, just stab in there. George does something a little different, but just stab and play all down beats on the refrain. Now on George's solo, uh, you'll need an A7 for the first chord. And then a first position, E. Then a full bar, F sharp minor. B7 to the E. George does some pickup notes into the solo. And George, uh, John plays on two. <clears throat> And it's kind of free strumming. It's uh, it's sort of like this. Mm. Just kind of feel it and, and free strumming. Uh, third verse, back to the, the triplets. After that third verse, uh, the refrain again. Mm. Stab. One. Then on the outro, um, he slides up to a C sharp minor up here, right? And up to an E on the 12th fret. Back to the C sharp uh, minor. And then E. And John stops really, really abruptly on the last chord. So from the refrain out.
And that's all the parts you need to play All My Loving like John Lennon. George Harrison is playing his trusty Gretsch Country Gentleman on All My Loving. This is a uh, Gretsch Country classic. Um, and like I said earlier, his rhythm part is pretty much buried, but if you listen to the Ed Sullivan show and a uh, number of the live performances, you could, you could decipher what he played. So you'll need these chords on the verse. This F sharp minor to a B. This E to C sharp minor. A. Now an F sharp minor uh, voice like this. A D chord. Sometimes he makes it a D sixth. To a B. Back to F sharp minor. B. The same E. C sharp minor. A. Up a whole step to B. And then this figure on E. Right, that's just third string hammer onto the first fret, open second string to the second fr fret of the D string. Now, George is doing an upbeat thing. And when you think about it, you know, John is doing that triplet, you know, uh, feel. Uh, Ringo is swinging on this thing. It's like uh, Paul's playing, you know, quarter notes. You know. Like that. And uh, now George is doing an upbeat thing. So George's accents come on the first beat and then the upbeat of two, upbeat of three, and the upbeat of four. Um, so it's like. Now, of note is that the last eighth notes of every measure is kind of ghosted. But if you were to write it out strictly, you'd have to write out the last eighth note as the same chord of the next measure. So if I'm going from F sharp minor to the B, that last uh, eighth note is a B of the first measure. So if I did it really slow, it'd be like. But of course, that's way too strict and you wouldn't play it like that. Uh, to tempo, it's like this. down Ringo. <laughs> okay, then on the refrains, um, George plays the same chords as, as John, same voicings too. C sharp minor, C augmented, and then George voices his E like, like John does this crazy E voicing instead of easier like this. But who am I to stay? Um, but he strums through the first uh, uh, chord and he plays a little, he's doing a little more strumming than, than you know, John is just stabbing and George is playing like, um, that like that just a little looser same same uh, punches you know as as John's but just uh, a down a strum right. very nice okay then after that after that refrain comes George's solo and the solo is like this oops Let me get a close up of that for you. So 
such a great solo with some, you know, really cool melodic inventiveness and, uh, you know, it's very unique. Um, he starts off, you know, he plays a B, E, F sharp, G sharp to A, and he does the sixth string with the stum, you know. So he gets to the A note and then he plays the uh, A bar chord. Or gets an E on the uh, fifth fret of the second string. Then he plays this figure. That's kind of unusual because that's over an A seventh chord and he's using a flat five. Yeah. You know, that uh, E flat. Most country guys would have gone. But George goes. Then when he gets to his E form, which he plays like this, he does this little interval playing where he plays the third string and the first string. Then he plays the fourth string and the second string, back to the third string and the first string, you know. And then this figure. Right? Again. A little odd sounding, but cool. Because it's implying, um, it's implying. things I hear him go he goes uh what do you do he went he played this made the E like a six chord nevertheless uh, to F sharp and again that um F sharp minor he does the uh that interval thing where he plays the third and the first string to the fourth and the second string back to the third first string all right then up to an F sharp minor up here all right and then on an E chord form, plays the uh, uh, the third string and the first string. Hammers on. <laughs> it's just a great solo. Okay, from there, um, verse, same thing. But when he gets to the refrain, it gets a little looser. I mean, he starts, he starts, you know. Just a little looser strumming. And he's almost full on strumming uh, up the outro uh, on the C minor. It's like. <laughs> on the record, you can't really hear him do that. It just sounds like he just plays the E, but live he always goes. So those are all the parts you need to play um, uh, like George Harrison on All My Loving. Okay, for fun, I put it all together now so that you can play along and use it as a reference. And uh, no, I'm not playing the bass left-handed. I'm horizontally flipping it in, uh, in uh, Final Cut Pro. So uh, take a look. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. I'll pretend that I'm kissing the lips I'm missing And hope that my dream will come true And then while I'm away, I'll write home every day And I'll send all my loving to you All my loving
I hope you enjoyed that, and I suggest you use my cover version as a reference. As you learn the song, play along with me and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And remember, have fun doing it, because that's what playing the guitar should be all about. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com, and that's where the chart and tabs are available to download. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. Mm-hmm.